Someone's an outsider. Someone says, uh, <laughs> if I create a site on SharePoint, a SharePoint site, Uh-oh. I've heard it. I've heard it both ways. Can I share it to the public so they can visit my site? Nope. Depending on yes. what you consider public, yes. Exactly. Define public. <laughs> if your secu- if your security is so poor, it is public. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's a company it's public. Public. Yeah. There, there are to... very, there are very real use cases, guys, where there yeah. are SharePoint sites that are created with anonymous access that they're set up and that site is blocked oh. off to, to serve a very specific need. Um, mm-hmm. Can it be done a hundred percent? Are there better ways to do it? Absolutely. But is a lot of that just a holdover from older SharePoint when it was a supported functionality? I mean, mm-hmm. Microsoft has been saying for many years, don't do that. I, I don't I think that it, can it, you it's, do it versus should you do it? Yeah, I think it's it comes down to your security and your risk tolerance, right? So this is back to your governance question. Like every single client, I have this governance question of how, what's your risk tolerance and what are your needs and what are your use cases? And I feel like if a business is setting up everything correctly and they have one site that is set up for anonymous access for a specific purpose and they have defined it that way and they have governance and they have security and they have control, then I don't think it's the wrong thing to do. But I think if they're just turning on everything for everybody, that potentially could definitely bite them in the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't want my, I don't want my long run bitten it into. So Where exactly is the really, long run? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but to, let's to move on point that. Oh, no, yeah. but probably painful if bitten. Very painful. Very painful. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, it's the worst. But to Sharon's point, there are use cases, right? There's information you need to share. And they started out as Dynamics 365 portals because companies had a specific need to communicate or share information with their clients, for example. So they had the client portals. And now they that's mm-hmm. evolved into power pages. So the, it depends on what you're trying to share. But the and some of the things I'm, I'm currently upscaling on power pages that I'm impressed with that they can't seem to do even in SharePoint is in the dataverse, you can you can um, secure a specific column mm-hmm. in yes. a table. Yeah. God bless you. Powerful, I'm right? I'm asking for that. You know, I don't want to have two years. Tables. Yes. Yeah. But, 20, but who's yeah. counting? Yeah. Yeah. Row and it's column like, level security, that's a big deal. And now we're, you know, we're, yeah. we're way out of the spectrum of like a web page. Like yeah. if you're spinning up a SharePoint site because you want to make a bunch of resources available to the public web, it may not be the right tool. But if you have a business need where you need some of your business data to be uh, consumed and interacted with with customers, then Sherry's right. A tool like Power Pages is going to service that need. Yeah. Now, you know, you, you use the tools that you have access to, right? And so if you've got an E-level license in SharePoint and Microsoft 365, excuse me, you're going to do whatever you can to get the job done. But if you're lucky enough to have more of the Power Platform licensing available to you, you should consider something like Power Pages. Yeah. You, you're you're bringing some of your business data into the context of those pages where people can interact. There's not... You can get rid of all this silly stuff where you're downloading PDF files for someone to fill out and then upload back into your anonymous SharePoint site that you've you've had to spin up. You could have it all happen in real time. You can give them a really good user experience. And honestly, uh, if I can figure out how to do Power Pages uh, in like one of these one-hour tutorials that you do at Microsoft Learn, I think it's you know it's kind of reasonable that most people can figure this stuff out as well. Um, powered by Dataverse, which is a really great platform. If you have not heard of Dataverse before, it's what sits behind Dynamics. So, and it has all of that security, it's a managed service, has all of those built-in objects for you already that you might use for that common uh, data model that they have inside of Dynamics and whatnot. And it's very scalable. So you can start slow, like if you're just, you know, crawling, you can go through that walk iteration and you can get up to the run state where we're, you know, where we were talking about column and row level security. It's quite a bit of stuff. And then natural integrate integration into power automate, power BI, power apps, and all that other stuff. So I, I agree. Power pages might be a better tool. Perfect mm-hmm. use case. I was just working on a migration between 
two different companies that one was acquired by the other. We had a SharePoint list listing all of the SharePoint sites, basically the checklist of over 6,000 sites of what was happening with them. Were they being deprecated? Were they being absorbed into another site? You know, what was happening to them? And they wanted the copy of that on their site, on both sides. So the old and the new. So I was using Microsoft Access because I have that skill to keep the three of those lists in sync because I can, I know how to do that. But not everybody knows how to do that. But how else would you do that? If you're like, we are only moving, you know, groups at a time, 150, 200, 300 at a time, and then having to go update those lists with the new information, you know, so mm -hmm. to have that one list and put it on a power page and just say, here, here's your, here's the gospel truth and take out the, the middleman and, you know, me having to dust off those access skills with paste to pin and pay, you know, update queries. Yeah, that, that would have been beautiful. <laughs> You're nodding, Christian. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, access skills. <laughs> so much fun. I know. <laughs> Christian's like, I don't know what word you just said. I It's a foreign, foreign oh, no, word to, to me. I used to build quite a bit. Sure, and I've had these conversations. I used <laughs> yes. to use access quite a bit. I was trying to help you. Likewise. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where back, I'm trying to remember when I, it was shortly after I was uh, uh, back in the Unix days and the Unix training courses that I actually went to access training. Company mm. paid for that for me to go mm. do. So I wrote well nine spent. hours of video Money training well on access oh. in 2019. Nine hours of video clips. Hey, it it's did the job. It's still relevant, isn't it, though? <laughs> it's yeah. it huge. What's that? It's still very relevant for people. It though. is. Yeah. It and if you understand SQL, it's not a big jump. Dataverse isn't a big jump if you have that skill set either. So mm -hmm. it, it it's didn't die. It hasn't died. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, yeah. I guess yeah. Access and Excel are like the, the original low-code, no-code in the yeah. Office 365. It's true. Very true. Well, I'd say, uh, uh, well, I put uh, non Microsoft tech. I'd say uh, Access, Excel, and Lotus Notes are the original low code, no code. I did Lotus. True. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just saying. I I ran away from Lotus. Haters going to hate. But, the state, yeah. state was using it on a project. I'm like, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> original, original collaboration software. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why Lotus Notes was so so difficult to uh, to back out of because there are so many little database based applications people would build tools, little automations they'd go do on their own, and then they were just tied to it. They just couldn't get away, and there was no migration path. In fact, uh, when I was in MMS, so the precursor to BPOS. Um, we, I was in months of meetings where we were looking at whether using access and access services would be a viable route to try and figure mm. out a way, a path to migrate away from Lotus Notes solutions. Access and services was horrid. The answer yeah. was that it was not. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Thank you.